Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters in Christ. We greet you once again on this glorious and beautiful Sunday morning. We welcome you to another moment in the word of our God. Thank you so very much for tuning in with us on this day. We pray that God's blessings continue to overflow into your lives. Today is a very special day for me at the Abyssinia Baptist Church. Today is the 14th anniversary. This is my 14th, I began my 14th year of shepherding and leading the Abyssinia Baptist Church family. And for that, I am so honored and so blessed to be able to have been with you and to continue to uh, lead you in the directions that God would have us to go doing the work that the kingdom is calling us for the, in this day and time to do for the cause of our Heavenly Father. So we thank you once again and bless you for all that you continue to do for kingdom building sake. Today we're going to ask that you will go with us in the Word of God where we shall find our text for this morning. It is found in the Gospel as recorded by St. Matthew, Matthew, the fifth chapter, where we shall find our reading from verses 14 through 16. Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Today I will be reading from the New International Version of Scripture, and there you will find these words. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Amen. Let us look unto the Lord. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for this day. We thank you for this privilege and the honor that you have bestowed upon us to be able to share your word with your people. Now, God, we are blessed of you to have your presence in our midst. We pray, oh God, that as we uh, dwell in your word today, that you would continue to give it life, that it will be fruitful in our lives as we seek to do the things that you are calling for us in this day and time to do. Oh Lord, help us to be the disciples, not only that you have chosen and selected, but that will honor you and will give you glory. Lord, we thank you for this awesome privilege. Now have your way in our midst. This we do ask and pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Every soul says, Amen. Amen, amen. Okay, brothers and sisters, today I want to share with you from the thought, shine your light. It is not a stretch for me to say today that we are living in what seems like some very dark and perilous times, some days of uncertainty seems to be clouding over us, even with the uh, current uh, situation that we're in with the coronavirus still uh, being a major factor within our communities and our world. So we know that God has everything under control and we just have to assemble ourselves together to be able to do the things that he would have us to do in this day and time. And one of the things that I believe that God wants us to do, even in the midst of the times in which we are in, is 
to shine our light. So today, that's the thought, that's the, the subject matter that I want to share with you. Shine your light. When God created the world, the first act he performed was establishing light. We look in the book of Genesis, it tells us that darkness was over the face of the deep. So on day one, the very first spoken word that God uttered in our Bible was, let there be light. And then the Bible tells us that he separated the light from the darkness. And we will notice that he did not do away with the darkness, but he did provide us an alternative to the darkness. He gave us light. And his action is, was much like our response when we are confronted with darkness. We too look to turn on some light. By his actions, God demonstrated that he did not desire for his creation, for his humanity to dwell in darkness. As we look backward, we will always seem to understand that darkness cast an image of something evil or something sadistic or even a mixture of everything that is not good. As a matter of fact, one of the definitions of darkness is wickedness or evil. But then there's another definition that is associated with darkness and it simply defines it as the absence of light. And today that view of the dark continues to hold true. Envision with me for a moment yourself passing a Caucasian, one of our European brothers or sisters of the lighter persuasion. And as you are approaching them, you see that they are dressed in all black from head to toe. Their hair is dyed jet black. Their, their fingernails are painted black. Their, their face is adorned with black lipstick. You've seen these people walking around in our society, but, but let me ask you today, what is your immediate thought when you see them? If we're true about it today, most likely it will be something evil generated solely from the appearance of blackness. So, is it any wonder when some of them look at your black skin that they think similar thoughts about you? It didn't matter whether it was clothing or skin color. The common factor was black or the appearance of darkness. And now this, this dates back many, many years to the days of ancient Rome when there had been a cynical connotation affiliated with dark things. Have you ever asked, your question, asked yourself the question, how did black cats become a sign of bad luck? Any of you remember when we used to be referred to as darkies, among other degrading names that they had used for us down through the years? Darkies were stereotyped as bad people simply because of their skin complexion. They didn't know you just as well as you didn't know them, but they assessed you being 
bad or less than simply because of the color of your skin. But before you think today that this is going to be about a racial issue, let me add another factor in here that light-skinned blacks also discriminated against darker-skinned blacks. Seldom in our history is black or darkness associated as something good. I mean, I love sweets, but I stop and think about it. Even a chocolate cake with chocolate icing, as sweet and moist and delicious as it may be, is called a devil's food cake. But if you have a bank account and your bank account is in the black, then they say that's good. But if it's in the red, then that's not so good. And now I am a firm believer that black is beautiful. I sing along with some of those who say black don't crack. And yes, I certainly shout to the top of my lungs that black lives matter. But the darkness that I am referencing to you today has nothing to do with one's race or ethnical origin. No, this, this darkness has to do with one's state of being or environmental mental condition. Science has even suggested that decreased light can cause drops in the human body's ability to produce serotonin. And serotonin is a, a chemical in the brain that helps to determine one's mood. And now, granted, we all encounter mood swings. But yet, my brothers and sisters, there are those who find themselves constantly and continuously walking around in the dark with outstretched arms trying to feel their way. They're trying to feel for what is familiar in order to find their way out of their darkness, all the while running into things that they didn't know was there or was hoping that they would avoid. <clears throat> Going through the discomfort of not being sure where their next step would lead them or what the next day would bring for them. And I want to let you know that this occurs just as often in our spiritual lives as it does in our physical life. We're wandering aimlessly in the dark, trying to feel for God's presence. Wondering to ourselves when we're going through situations, where is he and why can't I feel his presence around me? Why has or is he allowing these things that are happening to me to continue to happen to me? Even driving us to the point saying, what am I going to do now? It is in moments like these that we feel as though darkness has covered the face of the deep. And our thoughts began forming that God is too elusive. And so we, we feel left alone in our tragedy. We're left alone in our trials, left alone in our pain or despair. And we're looking for a way through or for that glimmer of hope that will lead us to the way out. I remember growing up 
and going to the annual carnival and experiencing an exhibit that they called the Fun House. The Fun House was a dark maze of seemingly endless walls and turns whose only hope of escape before panicking was to find a glimmer of light that would lead them through. Unfortunately, sometimes the attendant to the exhibit had to take his or her light to go rescue the ones who could not find their way. And my brothers and sisters, that example demonstrates to us and teaches us that there are some around us and maybe even some among us who are stumbling in their personal darkness, feeling lost and left alone, feeling as though they have been forsaken and forgotten. Their, their life is in pain and they're on the verge of panic. And they are looking for a guiding light, just a glimmer of light, a ray of hope, but yet all they see see is the darkness that is before them. I tell you, it is in these times for them that they are in need of an attendant to come and shine their light. What many in the church today have seemingly gotten a little confused is the act of directing everyone to Jesus. If you encounter someone who's in darkness, you tell them they, they need to seek Jesus. If you encounter someone who's in trouble or going through a storm or whatever trial or tragedy may be present in their lives, we tell them that Jesus is the way. He, he is the truth and the life. And I agree with you. He is personally declared that I am the light of the world. And I say unto you, none of what I have just said is debatable. But as we began to look at the Bible, as Jesus began his public ministry, the words of the prophet Isaiah are written and elevated in uh, Matthew's text in the fourth chapter and the 16th verse where you will find the words, the people who sat in darkness saw a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and the shadow of death, light has dawned. Letting us know that Jesus' ministry was like the reminiscence of that first day of creation. Because when he, came, when he came and when he began his public ministry, it let us know that the light has come. And the light coming is separating us from the period of darkness and establishing a brand new day. And undoubtedly, that light was and still is Jesus Christ. But however, as I said, we've gotten it a little confused. We need to understand that Jesus was not the only light. Because had he been the only light when he ascended back into the heavens, the absence of his presence would have plunged the world back into a state of darkness. But it is in his illuminating absence that the world remains lit by what we would call lesser lights. Lights that Jesus uses to keep the darkness from covering the world once again. And there we find it here in our text. There in that 14th verse, Jesus identifies those lesser lights as he begins to address a multitude of disciples who had gathered and come 
unto him. As he is speaking to them, he tells them, ye are the light of the world. And my brothers and sisters, we ought to just stop right there and just take that in because some of you don't realize that what Jesus has just done to his disciple and those who were following them, he has paid them an awesome compliment. Just think, you being called, when he says that ye are the light of the world, he, he, what he is saying is he is giving us and bestowing upon the believers the same association that is assimilated with God the Father who is the light and now Jesus who has declared that he has, is the light and now he is telling those who believe in him that ye are the light of the world. But yet, the compliment, as great as it is, it also comes with responsibility. As a believer in Christ, both then and now, we have a great responsibility being the light of the world. Illuminating the stigma of darkness in the lives of those who are having trouble finding their way. When we recognize and hear that being a light means that we are to represent with a very visibility that others can see. The Bible says that no one lights a candle and puts it under a bowl. For brothers and sisters, we are all susceptible to all the same dangers, the same despair, the same evil, and the same darkness that others around us are facing. But because we have lit our light from the ever-glowing light of the world, we can see the light shining even in the worst of conditions. And I'm not speaking about an incandescent light. I'm not talking about a candle. I'm not even talking about a halogen light. But it is the light of faith that shines even in the midst of darkness, guiding us to a brighter dawning. It is the light of faith that causes us even in the midnight hour to just hold on and trust God a little while longer. And my brothers and sisters, as believers in Christ, as his disciples, the world must see, must see that visibility <coughs> in us who believe in him. They must see that we have placed our trust in him and that we believe that he is continuously guiding us, calling us in deeper into his marvelous light. The worst witness that we can encounter is one who does not believe his own message. So you can't call him the light and you can't be, 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 be called the light and not believe you are the light. Being the light means that we must be visibly seen by others. But being the light also means that we are to represent his presence in a way that others can feel. As I said earlier, there are so many who feel alone and forsaken and who are going through this thing or that thing, this situation or that thing, and they feel as though no one cares about the darkness that has covered their lives. 
They feel as though no one is concerned about the despair in which they seem to be drowning in. And they are just trying to feel their way through life, bumping into wall after wall, tripping over one thing and then another. Directions are a wonderful tool, but sometimes, brothers and sisters, it's more comforting and more consoling to go and grab them and take them by the hand and lead them along the path that they should go. And we as the Lord's representatives, we as the Lord's church, we as the, the disciples of the true and the living God, we are the very image of him that shows up in just the right moment to strengthen someone's faint-heartedness. Brothers and sisters, you must know it's never by coincidence. It's never by happenstance, but it's always by the directives of God Almighty who sits high and looks low, who directs and navigates the footsteps of our lives, leading us into individuals' lives that we might shine our light in their darkness. For my brothers and sisters, this is how the Lord uses us to be lights in the world of darkness. The light that he has lit in us, we are to reflect and shine upon others. That they may come to know darkness does not have to become a fixation in their life. And it doesn't have to be a permanent forecast overshadowing their life. Jesus teaches us in this opening instruction of his Sermon on the Mount how God expects to use each and every one of us who believe to disperse the darkness. Because it is when we radiate our light, when we shine our light, we too diminish the evil and reduce the impact and lessen the stigmas caused by setbacks and slip-ups and storms and struggles that seems to affect our moods each and every day that we live and sometimes drives us to the point of panic because we just can't find our way. Just like the story I told you, like that fun house attendant, as believers in Christ, we have the capacity to show the world, even in these dark and dangerous times, that there is still a greater light. There is still a guiding light and a glorious light that shines through each one of us, yet that light does not come from us, it comes from Jesus. And we understand as we know the Bible, he is no longer in the world, but he has ascended back to the Father. But we are. And Jesus tells us, ye are the light of the world. Therefore, our visibility is because we have decided to trust him. And we will not hide our light in the face of darkness. But instead, as believers in Christ, we will walk in the light. Songwriter says it's a beautiful light and we're walking in it because we're believing that he is showing us each and every step a more perfect way. But we are also there because our presence in the lives of those whom we encounter, God is directing our path so that we can let them know that they have not been forsaken, they have not been forgotten. God still knows all about them. He understands their plight. He, he feels their pain. And it is as we shine our light for those who are around us in the midst of darkness that they too will be able to find their way that they will find that they too have been lit and given a light and the ability to shine their light upon those in whom they encounter as they journey. 
<clears throat> and as I was thinking about this and in seeing this in my head, the work of the church as we pass our light one from the other, we light up the world so that all who walk in darkness can be led into the light of Jesus' love, his power, and his provisions. And I am convinced today that this is the principle behind the Great Commission when the Lord told us to go ye therefore. What he was actually telling us to do and sending us out to do was to go out and shine our light. That is what Jesus had left us to carry out on his behalf. And this is encouraged, this is same example is the encouragement behind the song that we sometimes sing when we say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I need to say something right here because some of us think that just because our light is dim, our light may not be as bright as someone else's light, but have you ever taken a dim flashlight and shined it in the darkness? It doesn't matter whether it was a bright light or a dim light. Whenever the light is shined in darkness, it dispels and disperses the darkness. So even if you just think that you've got a little light, then you've got to let your little light shine. Because, my brothers and sisters, this is the way God is building his kingdom. By all of us in our daily lives sharing our light. Because to share your light is to shine your light. To shine to the one who is panicking over putting food on the table. Shine your light so that they would know that God is still a provider. To the one who is battling with some sickness or disease, we need to shine our light so that they might be comforted in knowing that God is still a healer. To the one who is struggling in their season of distress and despair, shine your light so that they would know that God is still with them. He has not forsaken them or abandoned them. And if they will hold on to his unchanging hand, they will find that the Lord will see them through. As we live our lives, there are so many instances where the little light that we have can make a difference in someone else's darkness. And we are always understanding that it is never about us. But we're always remembering that we're not trying to draw attention to self, but that in it all, God would get the glory. And I want to encourage all of the believers out there today to shine your light. The Bible says in the concluding verses, he said, so that others may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I want to challenge us all today to let us cover this vast world in all of its conditions and situations. Let us cover it with the light of Jesus. Shine your light. That is what the Lord requires of us. And if we would do that, we would find the darkness that tries to overtake our lives to begin to push aside as light and darkness cannot dwell in the same place at the same time. I say unto you the words that Jesus said unto the multitude on that day. Ye are the light of the world. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for the opportunity you have given us. We 
thank you for the truth that has been put forth into our hearing and made fresh upon our minds once again. We thank you, O oh God, that you have chosen us. You have selected us to be the light that would shine in the midst of darkness that others might find their way. We recognize, O oh God, that we are in you today because somebody's light was shining around us. And you led us out of the darkness into the marvelous light. And as the prophet Isaiah said, the day has come and it's a new day's dawning because the light is with us. We pray, O oh God, that as we go forward today and into the many places that our feet shall try, we pray, O oh Lord, that you would illuminate in us to be able to do the things that needs to be done for someone else's life, that we might help them find their way to you. We recognize, oh God, we don't have to be rich and our covers don't have to be overflowing. But if we would just share what little bit we can with those who have less than we and let them know that it's not we who are doing it, but it's because of the Christ who lives within us, then God, may they do likewise as they find themselves standing in your great light. We thank you for this privilege and we thank you for this opportunity. And now God, if there's anybody among us who is still lost in sin, the light is shining bright and greatly right now, pointing them to you. But we know that if we would come and confess our sins before you, that you are just to forgive. And not only will you forgive us, Lord, but you will wrap your loving arms around us and you will lead us further along life's path and one day into your glorious kingdom. So we thank you for this privilege and for this opportunity to serve you and to be of service unto you as we live our lives. Bless, O oh God, your church as the continuous beacon of light, sending signals and rays of hope out into the darkness that all who would look upon it shall be drawn to it and find life and salvation. Thank you, O oh Lord, for all that you have done and continue to do on our behalf. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Once again, we thank you so much for tuning in and sharing with us in this word today. We pray that it will find root in your heart and that it will spurn you to action to do what God is calling us to do for our fellow brothers and sisters in this day and time. Remembering that age-old song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Shine, shine, shine. By way of announcements today, we want to reiterate unto the Abyssinia family on the upcoming Saturday, September the 26th. That's two weeks from uh, next Saturday, September the 26th. We will be doing a community food distribution on the parking lot of the Abyssinia Baptist Church uh, that we might be able to shine light in that perspective to those who are less fortunate. We hear so much uh, from the food bank commercials and all uh, conversations of people in this day and time who are really struggling trying to put food on the table. Some have lost jobs, have reduced income, and they're just trying to make it. And this is just one of the ways that God is allowing us, his church, to step forward, to be of service unto our community by providing them food on that particular Saturday. So we're encouraging our disciples at Abyssinia 
to volunteer, you can call in the church uh, uh, telephone at 301-773-4712. Leave your name, uh, a contact number, or email address so that we can get the information out to you. It's been formulated and we're getting ready to start passing it out. We are in need of food handlers, those who are able to lift boxes of food and they're not that heavy but lift boxes of food and you'll be placing them in vehicles as they are, 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 are coming on our parking lot uh, or giving them out, distributing them to those who are stopping by on that Saturday. We also need those who would uh, serve as traffic controllers to help us to navigate the traffic around so that we can get the flow going and service our community and keep uh, at things moving. Also, occasionally we have witnessed that when events such as this happen, that there are those who request special prayer. And of course, we would like to be able to pray with them and understanding that everything that we're going to be doing on that day, we're still going to be observing our social distancing. We're going to be wearing masks and gloves and uh, doing all that we can to keep ourselves safe but also to keep our guests who are coming to receive the food to keep them safe as well. So we encourage you to volunteer and be a part of this glorious moment and commission work that God has now given us. Also, brothers and sisters, I believe this week I have received mine, but this week there was a survey that was distributed. It went out initially via email, so all of you who the church has your email addresses, you uh, should have received your survey. If you don't have an email address or so on file, then I know they're, they're going to be mailing out hard copies with return address envelopes for you to complete a survey about us, the church, re-entering back into uh, fellowship and worship. We're asking that you would complete it and return it as soon as you possibly can. Uh, understanding that, <coughs> excuse me, that as we compile the information, it will help us to get a general idea of where our disciples are at this particular time. I know everybody is eager to uh, to uh, get back into worship at the church, and, and but yet still, there we want to make sure that we are very, being very strategic and we're being very disciplined uh, in uh, doing so. The virus is still running rampant in our community and we care so much about you that we don't want to see anyone affected or impacted by that. So we don't want to give it to anybody else and we certainly don't want anybody to give it to us. So there are certain measures that the church has to uh, uh, to take in order to secure or provide some level of security for those who may be attending. Again, there is no tentative date at this particular time, but we are beginning to formulate uh, so we can see where you are and what you are thinking and what you have uh, decided within yourself uh, so that we can know how we can move as a church. We know that God has us all covered and that he is keeping each and every one of us and we are thankful for the six months that he has now kept us through this pandemic and we are not going to rush his hand or rush our activity just so that we can say that we're back in church. We want to be servants unto the Lord because the ultimate thing is that we are the church no matter where we are. So we thank him for this privilege and this opportunity and this methodology that he has given us to still come to you in this format. Until we meet again, we pray God's blessings upon you. I do want to say those who will be emailing your uh, surveys back, what you need to do is you need to fill it out and then save it on your computer or your device and then send it back to the church 
email address uh, as an attached file. That's the way it can be done. Yes, uh, you will find that the notice says that it is uh, done with a level of um, anonymity, and certainly your email may come back with a name on it, but once your survey has been printed out, there is no name on it. So as they're sitting down and they are compiling the data, there is nobody's name who is present there. Uh, so that therefore your response, be true to yourself and true to what you feel, your response will have a level of anonymity. So please uh, complete it. And as I said, until we meet again, Stay safe, stay tuned, and stay connected. God bless you, and may heaven forever smile upon you. Shine your light.